Hello, it's Richard Vobes here with another editing workshop. And I'm going to continue with my little visit to Curford to use as a demonstration, really, um, on my editing. And this one, I thought I would just show you um, how I work on a video and hopefully it will answer some questions as we go along rather than just trying to give you how to do one thing and it may not be interesting to everybody. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. It's an earlier version than the current one, but I quite like it because it doesn't need a powerful machine. So this is the end result, as you can see on my timeline here, of the video. And there's a number of interesting things just to run through very quickly so that you so you can make some sense of it. And then I'll show you the process of what I do when I start um, a video and, and editing it. So first of all, as we've seen before, we have here along the front um, a number of clips which are my master clips which have audio and you can see the audio here in the green wave file but actually what you may not appreciate is I have muted this track here so you can't actually hear that because when I got to the end of my edit I tend to export all of the audio just the spoken word audio or the effects the the audio that I've shot as it were um, and I fiddle around with the sound in a different program. You can do it within this uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, in a thing called Fairlight, but I haven't really explored that terribly much because I, pref I know another program that I use. So I export that, and I usually give it a little bit of compression, I raise the levels a bit, normalise it a bit, and then bring it back in as a separate file and sync it back up. And that's this track here. So this track is all of those tracks been, having been fiddled with, if you see what I mean. OK. These tracks down here are music or effects. Um, so that's what these tracks are. And, and I put them in as I go along. Uh, these tracks up here are often still pictures or little bits of video which are mute in themselves but they we cut too so on a on a track like this on a clip rather like this one which is my main feature bless and then i'm going to be looking for a turning to my left which will take me north there's me talking let me just in increase that a bit so we can see what i'm talking about and then like i showed you before it will run to these uh, these two are images uh, well, in fact, they're all images. I can see that by IMG here. As I say, there's a little tiny stream down here. And it cuts to and a picture of the stream that I took. I passed cuts to another. Over a little lane. There was a cuts to nice another picture. House with the hanging tiles, very Sussex, very. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's that's effectively what there is. At the very beginning, I have my logo, which is here, and I make it. Gr I think I make it grow on this. Hello. Yeah. And this is the sound effect of the whoosh. OK, so let's just uh, pretend that we're going to do a completely fresh um, beginning. So now let me just point out one thing in this process, because I discovered when I was recording this workspace that the pop-ups that can come up do not always... Um, show. In fact, I don't think any of them shows. So although you'll see me click to something, I better let you know that I'm clicking on a pop-up that has an instruction. It doesn't seem to capture the pop-up. I don't know why that is. OK, so first thing I need to do is to create a new timeline, which I shall do like this. So it just reverts everything back as if nothing has happened. And as before, I've brought in all my clips. I mean, they're the same clips as before. And I've just put them into different folders for ease of use. So as it stands, we have at the moment just one video track here in the timeline, one audio track here. 
and I have all my original footage which is up here. So just as we did before what I would normally do is look at the video I haven't looked at this for some time I can't remember when this went out um, it's on a different machine it's not on my normal edit machine um, and that's and I'm doing it this way so that we just have one screen which most people will have rather than two screens which I have on my edit machine if you've ever seen any of my other videos where I'm sitting in front of it on my edit machine I've got two screens and so I can actually put the elements of this screen over two screens which makes it easier to work so I may be a little unfamiliar with working this way because normally as I say I'm I've spread these things out but anyway so what I would normally do is uh, look at the if I'm not that familiar with the footage but normally because I filmed that day and I usually edit that day on my walks I'm pretty familiar with it so I may not be so familiar with this because this was a while ago but this is this we've established is my um, first bit of footage as we saw so what, what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to drag all of the footage down um, now you can see here because I've previously edited it here you've got this little bar which has the in and outs which actually I've just realized if I can stretch this this way and that way so I've actually only selected that so what I ought to do is just re Put the beginning and the ends on here now you won't normally do that when you import the video for the very first time because it hasn't been previously edited of course but i'm just going to drag show you how i often do it i'm just going to drag the whole clip in for the sake of uh, this and i can and i'm using some shortcuts here to speed this up a bit but you can you know zoom in on it uh which which, as you'll see, if I if I make this go up here, whoops, I'm actually zooming in on the space. And if I do that, I'm it's the same length. It just looks like it's shorter, but it's just represented as uh, as um, all of it. But you just can work that out to your screen size. So what I want to do is I'm going to just bung this over on the end for the moment, at the beginning rather. Um, I hope this isn't too confusing because um, I'm now sort of approaching this like I would if I was just working on the video normally um, and you'll be able to just see how I do it so I know that I will have got a clap in there somewhere and let's have a look where is the clap I've just gone past it okay so there's the clap I'm going to come in there I'm going to level that up I've got that there as a reference sometimes I do it this way sometimes I do it the way I showed you before I've got the audio in here which is number one and it just so happens I've also found the clap point and marked it we showed you how to do that last time and I can bring it down there just to see but I can actually now replace it manually this way and know that it's I'm in Wessel. I know that that's it. So I'm going to link those two together. Um, I do that by right clicking the mouse and a pop up comes up. You didn't see that probably. Um, and you get the choice to link the clips. So it now it just means when I click one, it clicks them both. But I don't want to start with a clap. There's a point where I think I turn around like that. But I don't actually want to start with that either as the beginning of my video. But that's my main bit that I'm going to get into. So before all of that, I uh, want to have a shot of something else. So let's just go in. I'm going to have something that that sort of, for me, sometimes I just use something. Sorry about that, that's my phone going. Uh, something that represents the video. So in this case, I've got these horses. And I think they start coming down. That's quite good. What about this one? Yeah, it's just a horse in a field. That's quite nice. So I'm actually going to take that. I'm going to take all of it from these two points that I've selected, bring it down here with its audio. I'm going to um, bring it down here, but I'm going to reduce the audio here on a little slider. 
Okay. Come back here. I've just zoomed in a bit. A bit. And I'm going to fade that sound in. Now I can do that fading on this. Bear in mind, other edit programs work slightly differently, but it'll be a similar sort of thing. So that'll fade in. I'm using on this the camera sound. There's no wind puffing, so it's not too bad. It's just a little bit of atmosphere, really. Um, OK, so that's what I'm just going to use a bit of that. I also now want to come back and get my logo, wherever my logo is. Is. I can't think where my logo is. Graphics, is it in graphics? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to use this one that's got a drop shadow on it. I'm going to bring that down onto here. And what I want it to do, as you saw normally, is it's quite small and it grows. So I've created that graphic as a ping file, PNG, in Photoshop. So it's just a, a PNG, which means it's got an alpha channel, which means that you can see through it rather than a JPEG, which would block out everything. So just the text and the image has been exposed. So first thing I want to do is work out um, how small I want to make it. And I come up to the inspector here. I zoom out. I'm going to do about there and it's going to grow. Now, on this program is a very simple way to make that animate from that size to a bit bigger. So that's the size it's going to start at. So it's on my zoom up here. And I'm going to click here, which is a keyframe, tells it that it's going to start there. And I want it to grow, but I want it to grow relatively quickly. So I'm going to take my timeline to where I want it to grow. And I'm going to grow it to about here, about there, quite big. And that will automatically now put another uh, keyframe in. And if I click here, this is the keyframe button. There's a tiny little keyframe there and a second one there. And if I take this playhead back, you will see if I play. There it is. It's grown. OK, I can hide that because I don't need to see. I don't need to see the keyframes now because I know it, it, it does it. But I actually want it to fade in. So I move this cursor along here and I'll fade that in like that. But I and I want it to fade out quicker. So that's where the second keyframe is that I thought. So I can actually come to just before it or just after it rather fade that out about there. So when it reaches that it fades. I'll have it fade a bit quicker like that. So my my overall shot is there's the thing, it fades in, it grows, and what have you. But I normally put a whoosh sound on there, so I'm going to do that. I've got to find the thing. Here it is. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to bring that down to about track number three. Now, ordinarily, I know that's very loud, so I'm actually going to reduce its volume down to 17.5, which is my normal set volume for it. But I want it to start when the fade comes in. So I bring that in line with the logo, take the cursor back to the beginning, and there it is. Brilliant. So that's all good. But what I now want to do is to fade in. I want to fade out of that shot into this shot that we've prepped. I'm going to slide that back. But the thing is, I'm going to, you could do it two ways. You could do, you could butt it up and use a crossfade in the video transitions bar. You can crossfade here, I could do that. And you just slide the effect onto the, hello, like that, which is, which is okay. Could do that. Um, but what I actually am going to do, because I want the sound to crossfade as well, and you could put a crossfade in, but I want to be able to have a bit more control. I'm actually going to select these and I'm going to just lift that up. You'll see why now I put the whoosh on the third track because I want the, these two tracks to be the audio that is connected with the picture, i.e. the camera sound. So we've got Atmos from the horses here on 
on this track, on track two, and we've got me speaking on track one here. Now, because I just want to check that, and you may not see the pop-ups, but I'm just right-clicking here and making sure that each of these tracks are set to mono. You do that in different ways on different programs, but I've right-clicked a little pop-up and I can set it to mono. You probably didn't see that because the OBS software that does the screen capture doesn't show it. Um, so I'm just so these two tracks, which are my um, camera tracks, as it were, or the sound tracks, um, the live tracks, I suppose, is are mono. It just means that because I haven't recorded anything in stereo that I need to worry about. Any music and effects down here are still in stereo by default. Okay, so I'm going to take this track. I'm going to actually... This is the point I wanted to come in. And I sort of turn to camera, don't I? So I'm going to butt this up. Where, where do I want this one to fade out and finish? So I want it to happen quite quickly after the logo. The logo disappears. And about, about there... So I'm just going to take that back. I'm going to butt that up so that the two tracks hit each other quite nicely. Now, what I tend to do here is I will pull this back. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not moving the track. There's a difference here. See, you can see here, this is the audio of me saying hello, probably. Hello. Yeah. Notice there's a difference between me extending backwards the track which is back towards the clap in the actual event and me sliding the track can you see the difference now the hello is up here i don't want that i want the hello here so what's happening i just move that out of the way so you can see that actually as i pull this back you can see if I keep going, oh, you can't see it now, because but if I kept going, hang on, let me turn this video track, that one off and that one off. Is that it? I forget which one does. Is it that? Yeah, there we go. That's just hidden. All that's done is hidden the tracks above. So you can see that all I'm doing is I'm stretching back in time to the clap. OK, let me just put them back on again. So there's, there is a difference between sliding your track and stretching the track. I hope that's clear. It's only by experiment you'll understand what it is. So, uh, right, okay, so I've kind of lost myself a little bit in that explanation. So I want this, I want the, this to fade out. There's a breathing space. Then I want that to fade into this, but I want to fade on that turn. So let me just go back. Where's my turn? I start to turn about. I'm moving here. That's quite a nice place. So I'm going to butt that up here. I slide a little bit further back, and I'm going to fade that one out, the horse track. I'm going to fade that out. So now, because this is underneath, you will see this cross fade in when I play it. OK. But this is where I, this, the reason I'm doing it this way and not doing the crossfade thing is because I also want to fade in the audio on this track and fade out the atmosphere of the horses over the same period. So that instead of having the two audios just stop and the next one start, everything just fades in. Hello. And that, and that works really nicely. Um, so that's that would be how I would start that. I'm Richard Vogues. This is still the whoosh that's probably faded out now, but I'm, that's fine. It's on its own track. Sport Explorer out on another walk, and today's walk, I'm in West Sussex. Um, so so that's all right. So let's say uh, on this, I've got all this chatter. Hang on, let's go back and just see that the overall thing. I don't know what that is. It's a little anomaly, um, but actually we can see that I walk off at the end of this, so we don't need any of that. So I'm going to just cut this little piece and get rid of it. So we have an opener. Don't worry about that little sound of blip. That doesn't actually appear on it. 
Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk. And today's walk, I'm in West Sussex. I'm in, or I'm starting at a very lovely village called Curdford. Now, that's where in before I knew I had a picture of Curdford. So if I go into, into photos, I think we saw that there was a, that's the pub sign, I remember that now. Here we go, there's Curdford. I'm going to put in a picture of the sign because it's always good. I think, you know, you're talking about something, instinctively you want to see it. Now, if you remember last time I had to zoom in because the picture didn't quite reach the frame, which is great. Curdford. That's uh, very close to Petworth. And now, I could put a map in there. I don't think I've actually made a map for this one, um, but let's not worry about that too much. So I've put in the sign. Whisper Green. Um, how long do I want that on the screen? Uh, it's very close to Petworth and Whisper Now I'm talking about other Billy. places, so I don't really want to see anything more. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to let this zoom in very subtly on the picture. So in order to do that, in this program, just trying to think where it is down here, we've got something called dynamic zoom. So I'm going to collect that. Uh, I I swap this around. Uh, this is just a, a weird way that they work. So if I have it one, if I have just a dynamic zoom on its own, uh, very close it will to... zoom out. If I swap it round, uh, it will zoom in. Now I would have thought as a default you'd want to zoom in rather than zoom out, but it doesn't really matter. So I swap it out. I can zoom out, but actually. Um, I want to ease it in and out rather than just immediately start. So I choose ease in and out, which is on a drop down. But there we are. You can see it now. So it doesn't start uh, it's immediately. It's a more subtle zooming in. Uh, it's very close to Petworth and Whisper Green and, and Billingshurst. That might be too quick. That might be too quick. I might think, oh, that's a bit too quick. So I'm just going to extend my picture, which I can do. And it will make that zoom in a lot it's very close Slower to Petworth and, more and subtle. Green and Billingshurst here in, um, as I say, West Sussex. Curdford itself... Now, as I'm talking, I get to this point in the dialogue where I go... Curdford itself, beautiful village. Beautiful village. That's a great time to come off that. Not too much worried about cutting back to me because we're just listening at the moment and I'm not doing anything extra. So we've got some pictures of Curdford here. Here's a nice picture. So I'm going to cut to this picture. Again, because my camera that I took the pictures on is the frame is slightly different. Um, I have to just zoom in to bring it to the edge of the frames so that you don't get any bars down here so it doesn't look so bad. So. Beautiful village uh, with some very handsome old houses cut on houses. I always try to cut on the words, you know. So you're looking at that, houses. houses, cut to a house. So here's a house. That's a nice house. Let's just take that one. A bit overexposed, but not to worry. And again, this time I'm going to I'm going to zoom in much further on the house, reposition it a bit. I'm going to take it over there. It needs to be straightened. I'm going to straighten that a bit. Um, I worry about if I can do any more to the actual, you know, the picture uh, in another video about tweaking it. I mean, you can. I can go in here um, and maybe just darken a few things. Perhaps I could come in, change the shadow. Where's the shadows down there a bit? Uh, maybe take the highlights down a bit. Fraction, not too much. But something like that if I wanted to. But I'm not going to overly worry about it. Um, and then we can see the difference. I've just... You can see a slight difference there. It just makes it pop out a bit better. Houses. You've got the Half Moon Pub. And in fact, actually, that was stupid of me because I didn't listen to the dialogue because I'm talking about the Half Moon Pub. So, actually, let's move that house up there because I talk about the Half Moon Pub and I know I've got a picture of the Half Moon Pub. So, you know, this is where knowing the footage works so much better. So I know... That's the Half Moon Pub. Again, I just need to zoom in a bit. I want to see the sign and the pub. I'm going to move it down a bit. Uh, it looks pretty straight. The sign just looks a bit... It looks like it tilted, but it's probably also to do with the lens. If it was on a wide-angle lens, things do tend to sort of lean in. 
but as long as the main things in the picture are perpendicular then that's not too bad so that's okay quite like that maybe just actually bring it up I don't like this car roof but anyway I can't help that so we go you've got the half moon pub which is really half moon pub cut to that but didn't I have a close-up of the sign of the half moon yes I do so I actually quite like I'm gonna bring the half moon sign in here just move that down a bit so I've got more space we shut him out of the way. Which is really my star. So that's quite nice, you know, well, there we are, it's a bit of that. Really my Cut to the half moon sign. I'm going to zoom in even more because the quality of the pictures are really good. So I come down here, put a bit of that there. That's quite nice. Not going to put it in centre of the frame. I'm just going to have it slightly on the left. It's really my starting point and I'm going to be doing... We don't need that to, on there too long. Um, Circular wall. Now, these other pictures of the houses. I'm talking about a circular. So I'm listening to the audio and thinking about the what what we should see. Be doing a so I think we should just see me again here, just because I'm not talking about the houses. So let's just go back here. We've got a beautiful village uh, with some very handsome old houses. You've got the Half Moon pub. So actually. It's possible what I could do is this house that we were talking about, we could creep him in a little earlier. So I might just move those a little bit fraction there. So Our beautiful village. We might just come in earlier. Curdford itself. Curdford itself. itself. Curdford itself. Let's shunt him up there. Beautiful village uh, with some very with some very handsome old houses. You've got the half moon got the half moon on the word pub let's cut to the pub the half moon pub which is really my starting point and I'm going to be doing a circular walk uh, around some of this and, and as you can see that's a good place to come back to me because I start then gesticulating and pointing at things walk, uh, around some of this incredible countryside here now, I don't know if I've got in my footage, my DSLR footage, where is my starting point? Do I have any shots of the countryside? Did I, did I specifically show any? Well, here's a nice bit of countryside. So I could take a bit of that. Countryside here. Countryside here. So we've got the wonderful um, old houses of... Cur and I go back and talk about the old houses again. Um, old house. So uh, let's come back to our old houses. I was seem to remember uh, photos. I seem to remember. Uh, I thought there was another sign of Curdford. No, that's the church. I took, I took lots of pictures. We've had that one already. The half moon we don't want to show that again that's a nice that's a nice old oh here I look got a different sign of Curdford which I could use but I'm going to use that one the old old houses so it's, I like to cut I like to cut as frequently as I can because it sort of helps tell the story if you see what I mean so we'll move that like that we'll straighten that up Old houses of Curdford and the village with its uh, delightful church. Delightful church. Still waffling here. So we've got the delightful church shot. Shove that in. A delightful church. Yeah, maybe a bit. A delightful church. Delightful church. Extend that. Zoom in here. So you can see it, it can be quite complicated. and Or not complicated, complex. Delightful church, which is... Something I must go back and explore on another occasion. And I may, I think there's another shot of the church. Here's a nice shot, so we could do... Another occasion. Another occasion. Zoom that in a bit. Maybe take that down a fraction. Somewhere there, maybe straighten it a bit. Something like that. Or on another occasion. Um, you can probably hear an aeroplane. That's because I'm under the Gatwick flight path. 
being fairly close to Horsham and then Gatwick, you're going to get a bit of that. I've walked up through somewhere called Boxall Stud. Now I talk about this other place, Boxall Stud, and I did actually take a picture of that so I can show that. So at the moment all I'm doing is I'm just adding pictures uh, on top of the text. Uh, on, sorry, on top of the uh, main uh the main video Some wonderful horses wonderful horses um, so here we go that's where my horse is and we did we used a shot of the horses where's that in dslr wasn't it we used that one but let's sorry about my phone let's use a little bit of this they come they come right down but uh so i talk about box or stud some wonderful horses um which so i've got to give people time to read that obviously and then bring in the horses which are in these terrific now fields, beautiful. Um, which are in these. I can hear this audio on that shot because I brought it in. Oh yeah, down there. So actually, I don't need that audio. Uh, so let's just undo that. Just take just the picture. Um, which are in these terrific fields. Beautiful. That's my phone looking. again. Sorry about that. And well looked after horses, as you can imagine. Um, on the map, actually, it gives it a different name to Boxall Stud, so it must have changed its name fairly recently, but a very beautiful and well-kept place. And I'm going to continue my walk. So they kind of come down to a point. I'm going to continue my walk. Uh, you go through all of that. Uh, so it's difficult sometimes when there's movement I'm here. I'm going to continue my walk. On the camera and them, and, and then it's... That can suddenly um, stop so I'm actually going to dissolve or fade to I'm back go to me all of that. No, I don't know actually that looked a bit crap uh, let's do that a bit quicker you go through all of that uh, that's not so uh, bad go through all of that uh, it is a public footpath at first you think oh am I am I trespassing here but no and I'm going to carry on down this path actually I mentioned that it's a public footpath I think actually in there somewhere in my pictures I've got a picture of the sign but that's irrelevant really it's for the moment big, uh, dung heap. <laughs> and take a big circular route. So uh, let's go and do that, shall we? Come on then. And off I go and I start to walk away and clearly I don't do the whole walk because I actually come back to the camera, don't I? Because I've got to turn the camera off. And here he is, there he is, walks back to the camera. But we don't want to show that in the video. Uh, let's go and do that, shall we? Come on then. So I start to go, that's a good place to cut. So I would normally just cut here and say, right, OK, now I'm always saving my work. So um, I'll see if I can save that. Yeah. OK, so the next shot, I think, is uh, I start to go. And then here's a shot of me. I can't remember which way around this is. It must be this way. I'm walking towards the camera and actually I can see where I've previously decided on an in, in point so I'm going to take so I'm not going to use the first half where I've set the camera up and I've gone off to position that's me in the position that's me getting ready and then I start to walk so I'm going to take in that I'm also going to have the sound on that and I'm going to do what I did before and so I'm going to butt them up I've got the sound I'm going to lower the sound of that a bit I'm going to extend that a bit, fade that one in, fade that one out rather, fade this one in. And then we cut to me walking. And all I'm doing is I'm walking past the, the uh, tree. So there's a lot there to take in and I don't want this to go on uh, for ages. So... Um, the next task might be I might want to put some music in here and there might be a sequence of walking. So I'm going to leave that for the next part of this um, workshop. So I'm going to save my place so that we can come back to that on another one. And um, so hopefully that's been interesting and entertaining. Well, I don't know about entertaining, but you can see that... This is how I build up my timeline from beginning to end. So it may be that I need to put some titles and captions and things in, some music, and we'll do that um, 
as we build up on this little workshop here. So thank you very much for watching. Very much appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Take care and goodbye for now.